Matriki baby The Matriki Quarency Hey Mzansi and welcome to Mzansi Scenes. So the word beef is used in gossip tabloids more frequently than in McDonald's commercials when it comes to these celebrities. Here are some of SA's biggest celebrity enemies right now. Guys, it's never too late to kiss and make up. At number one, we have the Ghanis and them daughters. A time where Ghani and his wife are not on speaking terms with his ex, Timmy Sam daughter and her sister Anele. The pair have been shading each other on social media following their messy breakup. This is after it was revealed that Atanwa is not the father of Tembisa's twin sons. The pair had dated for a couple of years until the actor called it quits after he learned that Tembisa was apparently cheating on him. On June 21st, 2016, Atanwa posted a tell-all statement on his Facebook page. The statement went into detail as to how he and Tembisa's daughter met and how it came about for him to find out the paternity of the two children he thought were his. The statement read, this statement serves to give an honest, detailed account of the events that transpired between myself and Ms. Temi Samdota. Ms. Mdota and I met in 2004 at Wits University. We had an on and off relationship throughout our student years. We both consequently moved on and were involved with other people. In 2011, we met up again on a casual basis. Soon after, she told me that she was pregnant. My immediate response was to request a paternity test once the children were born because she was intimately involved with another man at that particular time. This request was met with hostility. I decided, assuming I was the father, to do the appropriate, befitting and right thing, which was to be a supportive and active partner throughout her pregnancy. I would introduce the paternity topic every now and then, but would be met with a continuously growing unwillingness and animosity. Even to the point of being threatened, I would never see the children if I decided to press on with the issue. The children were born in 2012 and Ms. Ndada and I split the parenting responsibilities and continued our relationship. However, in 2014, rumors surfaced that she had been unfaithful. Once the media caught wind of this story, I decided in order to protect the children and my family name, to deny the allegations and we threatened to sue the publication. In 2015, when the relationship with the said man persisted and more rumors sprang that she had aborted the man's baby, I decided to leave the relationship. During that confrontation, she slapped me across the face countless times and swore I would never see the children again, claiming to have been black, blue and battered, expressing to her family that I had deserted her and the children. She kept me from seeing the children for many months, which prompted my family and I to seek legal assistance from a family lawyer. After months of deliberation and a seemingly unended stalemate. In November 2015, she eventually agreed to take the paternity test. I collected the blood test results from Landsat Laboratories four weeks later in December 2015, and the results revealed conclusively that probability of paternity 0.000%. With them further explaining, the results of DNA profiling analysis of the three persons identified above indicate that Atanwa Ghani is excluded from being the biological father of the child. So since then, the pair have been throwing shade at each other with family members and significant others joining in to comment on the feud. Their dislike for each other resurfaced when Atandra tweeted that he was looking forward to watching our perfect wedding now that Tembisa was on a break from hosting the show. That didn't go down well with Tembisa and her sister Anele who threw the shade right back claiming that Atandra got married to Figuila on a balcony. Atanda tweeted, Yes, it's at Jessie Kangosi. Finally, I can watch hashtag our perfect wedding. She's beautiful and talented. It didn't help matters that his new wife, Vicky Lim Twalo, decided to join in the fun. She quoted his tweet and added, She's slaying. I missed watching this show too. Needless to say, Timmy Sam daughter didn't find this very funny. In fact, if you know her and her sister Anele, you will know that neither of them are the type to hold their tongue when they are offended. Both sisters retaliated, Temi sa tweeting, Akondo da pa, bukwengwe ubupina pineneyo. Anele added some bite to the beef when she wrote, Galoku wa chata kwi balkan yi samakon townhouse, hence it can't wait for our perfect wedding, prince of theatre, yama. Atando's feathers would not be ruffled and he laughed off people's criticism on social media. At number two, we have Noma Kigaba and Muslim Kize. 
To be fair, if a woman claimed to have been having relations with my husband, I don't think we'd be the best of friends either. Mute has done everything she can to get under the Gabba skin, including a series of open letters and outspoken posts. The biggest test of Norma Gigaba's marriage came shortly after she tied the knot with her husband, then Minister of Home Affairs Malusi Gigaba. A few months after their December 2014 wedding, Norma received an email from her husband's mistress, Mutlem Kizem. The New York-based stylist spilled the beans on their affair, which allegedly started before Malusi and Norma walked down the aisle. Mutlem apparently had no idea that the minister was a taken man and only found out on the day he got married. The scandal reached a major climax in 2015 when Mutlem penned an open letter revealing every detail of their affair. Despite the drama, Norma stood by her man, even going so far as to call Mule a Mahosha. Norma said to Sanu Tribune in 2016 that, This woman is obsessed with me. At some point she apologized, saying she didn't mean what she said, but still continued. I did not tell her to sleep with my husband. Malusi admitted it and said it was a mistake. We are over it, but I will also call her a Mahosha for demanding money. Mutle penned down details of her alleged affair with Malusi. In the note, Mutle, who is currently residing in the USA, explained how she and the minister met. She wrote, I virtually met Malusi in early July 2014 via Instagram. We randomly started following each other on the network, discovered we shared the same sense of humor that led to exchange of banter. She continued, the messages were flattering but uncomfortable. I am a married woman and had a relationship with a public figure in the past and hated what comes with it, so this wasn't the route I wanted to take, even if I was single. Butler explained that she only found out about Mr. Gigaba's wedding on the day. When Butler questioned him and how he heard his wedding from her, Malusi allegedly apologized and explained that he feared she wouldn't give him a chance. She wrote, he explained that he had been married in the past and had an ugly divorce that didn't sit well with some of the public. He also said that he wanted to succeed politically and had kids with Norma and it wouldn't be the right image for him to have the record of an ugly divorce and then a baby mama who in his own words basically cornered him into marrying her. He claimed she had lots on him that wouldn't paint the right picture. However, they continued to communicate via text messages. They eventually met face to face when he flew her to Cape Town. Norma eventually found out about the alleged affair and when she confronted her husband, he denied everything. Butle said her husband ended up filing for separation. Her affair with the minister continued but she came to her senses after having a long conversation with Norma. In the conversation, Norma apparently begged her to end the affair with her husband. She wrote in the letter, I regret being a part of something that hurt another woman. Long story short, Butle is now working on a marriage and apologized both publicly and privately to Norma. She said her affair with Malusi is over. When Norma spoke about the affair, she said it had been a difficult time for her family. Norma, who has two sons with Gigaba, said she felt her husband's affair was karma as she was apparently his side chick when he was married to her first wife. Norma received criticism for the interview but it seems she invited Kizu right back into her life, exactly where she had not wanted her to begin with. Mulder responded to the interview by saying she was not going to sit by and watch Norma lie to the public. In fact, Mrs. Gigaba should have refused to speak about the affair as everyone had moved on from it. Tweeting the minister directly, Mulder further warned Gigaba to keep his wife on a leash or she would reveal more details about the affair. And number three have AKA and Casper Nuvest. The biggest rivalry in Zanzi history has to be the one between rappers AKA and Casper Nuvest. The platinum selling musicians started out as friends but things became sour between them shortly after Casper released his hit single with OK Malum Cool Cat Kusheshe. According to AKA, Casper's moaning on social media rubbed him the wrong way. AKA told MTV Base that he was coming up, I think it was around the Kusheshe time, and I've always looked out for new artists. We had even started to work on music together. One day I think he had put his video out or something, and the next day he went off about I don't have the support no one is really holding me down and I'm going to put the song out and show everybody. I think we kind of fell out, maybe because of things he said on Twitter as people do. Things got ugly from there, both AKA and Casper released diss tracks about each other. AKA took a swap at his rival in his 2015 smash hit, Composure. A verse in the song went like this, Heard you moving up, now in the city of gold. When I go to Moth Town, I must sit on the throne, trying to fill up the dome, about to fill up your home. The lyrics were clearly about Casper, who not only grew up in Moth Town, AKA Mafi Gang, but he is also known for his popular fill up concerts. 
Casper's distract dust to dust was equally spicy. He more than hinted about AKA's alleged use of Izidakamiso and also rapped about AKA's failed relationship with DJ Zinke. Things got quiet for a while and the rappers even appeared to kiss and make up in 2016. They were spotted hiking at Casper's Philip Orlando Stadium concert. But that was a short-lived reunion. Casper revealed in 2018 that he will never reconcile with AKA for as long as he is living. He tweeted, That will never happen. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. It will never happen. It's gone too far. Ain't nobody I don't mind reconciling with and building with except the bro. Let's build. At number 4, we have Bunang Mateba and Lira Tenghanyaho. Rumors about an alleged rivalry between Lira Tenghanyaho and Bunang refused to die down to there is any bad blood between them. The drama allegedly started when Lira got a TV role that Bunang was eyeing. Queen B and LKG tried to put the rumors to bed by posing for pictures. By posing for pictures together, Bunang even went as far as to defend Lerato after True Love magazine shared unedited pictures from Lerato's June 2016 cover which showed her cellulite. It shared the images after being accused of airbrushing Lerato's cover to the point where she was barely recognizable. The editing was needed apparently. Bunang wrote on social media, I'm so livid at Lerato Nkanyaho poured her heart about the most delicate part of her. She dared to express her displeasure of how she was altered and the response from one of the most iconic publications in this country was to shame her. The fans were satisfied that the talk of the beef was fake news. That was until April 2017 when Bonang resigned from Metro FM, just hours after a station reshuffle saw her co-hosting her popular show, The Front Row with Lerato. While Bonang claimed that she left because she was upset that radio bosses notified her about the change shortly before she was about to go on air, social media users gave her a major side eye. Many believed that Bonang quit because she wanted to be the only star of the show. Queen B denied the claims and insisted that her dramatic exit had nothing to do with Lerato. Lerato would go on to describe the day she co-hosted the front row with Bonang as her darkest moment on radio. Despite that mission, LKG tried to downplay the statement by saying she respected Queen B. She said on Metro FM, in the beginning it was great but it was very tense and I thought it was a theating phase. We will get over it but it was just awkward. I have so much respect for her. She has her own reasons why she left. I think it's safe to say that these two will never be besties. At number five we have Pearl Tusi and Bonimboli. Pearl has been involved in rivalries with stars such as AKA, The Bad Is Now and Tiki Mazwai, but one of the famous twas involved another famous actress. Bonnie Mooli got into a heated exchange on Twitter with Pearl Tusi about her skin color. Pearl defended her career in June 2019 after Twitter users claimed she was only famous because she was a light-skinned black woman and had zero talent. The Quantico star defended herself by saying she had worked hard to get where she is today and she has also lost roles because of her skin color. She tweeted, I've lost many jobs to dark skinned women because I didn't fit the mold of a real black woman for people. And other times because that woman was more beautiful or talented. Being light won't get you there and keep you there. You need to work and work hard to prove that point. It wasn't the first time Bonnie called Pearl out on Twitter. In March 2018, Bonnie slammed Pearl after she appeared in a photo shoot that purposely made her skin darker. Alright, that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment down below and hit the notification bell.